big warm welcome to Science Park Mjärdevi and Linköping. Uh, and I'm very glad to see all of you here today. Uh, my name is Lena Miranda. I'm the CEO of Science Park Mjärdevi. Uh, and together with my colleagues here in the science parks, I'm part of the board of Science Park Mjärdevi as well as the student board. We are very happy to welcome you here to Linköping. And I'm so happy to see that so many have chosen to uh, fly in or take the train here to Sweden to participate in this important discussion on tech with a purpose, emerging technologies and enabling innovation ecosystems. So today we have participants from Finland, from Estonia, Lithuania, Slovenia, Hungary, the Netherlands, Germany, Spain, France and Iceland. So I hope I didn't miss out on anyone uh, and I hope that you feel all very, very welcome here. I'm also extremely happy to welcome my colleagues from Sweden and all over Sweden. And some of them have had some trouble getting here because of the strikes uh, with SAS. So uh, extra welcome to the colleagues from Luleå and Skellefteå who has really taken the effort to fly in here today. Uh, but also parts of Gothenburg, we have Westerås, we have Dalarna here joining in and Stockholm, of course. Very welcome to all of you Swedish colleagues as well. So to begin the day, I would like to introduce, and I'm very happy to have the General Director of the International Association of Science Parks and Areas of Innovation, Mr. Louis Sons, here, together with André Domin, who is uh, the President of the European Division the IASP. So please give them a warm big hand and welcome up on stage. Good. So to begin with, I would like to hand over the word to you, Mr. Sons, to tell us a little bit about your views on this. Thank day. you, Lena. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome. First of all, uh, a big word of gratitude to Mjärdevi Science Park and the Swedish colleagues for the effort they put together. It's been a nice long journey. And I think also that the topic we have chosen for this workshop is uh, amazingly important and of course also very interesting. So taking advantage of that title, Tech with a Purpose, I thought I would like to share with you a few reflections, or let me call it the bigger picture. It is, of course, quite okay that at our various meetings and conferences we discuss and try to learn about the various components and elements that make up our jobs. Uh, so we can talk about how to better provide adequate spaces and facilities for the type of companies that we want to host and nurture. That's fine. It is fine that we talk about how to better improve the mechanisms by which we can put together universities and companies to communicate. That's also fine, it's part of our job, of course. And I have to say that we can be proud, when we look a little bit uh, uh, to the past, that we have contributed, I would say, largely, so that these two quite often separated universes, the university, the academia world, and the company, the market, the business world, are now, by and large, collaborating, and have learned to collaborate and cooperate, something that was not quite obvious and evident, let's say, 15, 20 years back. We have contributed largely to do that. We also foster the birth and the creation of new technology-based firms, incubation, acceleration processes, spin-off mechanisms, you name it, and that's also fine. Even on a more slightly cultural note, we have, as science park industry, contributed, I think, heavily to nurturing the culture of entrepreneurship, to enhance it. And we can, of course, talk about all those things, but I would perhaps uh, like to make the point to the fact that very often, uh, because we are caught in the struggle of everyday problems, we risk to miss a little bit uh, the bigger picture. And I think it's positive and interesting and important that we are able to put our everyday job and mission into a bigger frame so as not to get lost in the midst of the little, the little details. 
So allow me to delve a little bit in these minutes of introduction uh, with the hope that it will set a, a broader frame for our discussions. Now, every generation believes throughout history that they live in a crucial moment where significant changes are happening. And partially they are all true, but some are more true than others. And I am persuaded that now we are on the verge of something very big about to happen. Actually, I think it's happening, but because we are in the middle of it, we may lose somehow perspective. Uh, I have many friends uh, that are professional philosophers. And I talk often to them. And now there is a sort of tsunami, a new wave, a new, uh, I don't want to use the word doctrine, a, a new line of thought, a new school of philosophy which responds to the name transhumanism or posthumanism. And it's really a wave that is, you know, producing an unbelievable amount of papers, PhD theses, publications, etc. There is a substantial amount of bullshit around all that transhumanism concept, but there is also a lot of serious, rigorous thought about it, and I think it has a lot to do with what we do if we want to embrace it, or if we want to reflect about it. So basically, uh, I think in a, in a time that has seen the failure and the collapse of the big systems, philosophical systems, religions have lost the authority and the prestige they once had, the substitutes of religion, the ideologies such as Marxism and others that wanted to give an account of the whole human existence are also losing somehow predicament because we live in the time of post-truth and fake truth and, and emotional politics rather than rational politics and all that. This type of belief in that something very big can happen is somehow coming up to substitute many of the things that we are losing. So in this transhumanism philosophy, as it were, people are already talking even, uh, they, they already found a new name. So after the Homo antecessor, allow me to pronounce it in the classic way, or Homo sapiens and Homo sapiens sapiens, now they talk about the Homo excelsior or excelsior, to pronounce it in the Ciceronian way. Uh, that is already uh, something interesting because this Homo Excelsior comes here to join another new concept that is already coined by many scientists and that this one has been already scientifically adopted. Now we live in the Anthropocene, no longer in, in, in the... Ge it's a new geological era where the print that we humans live on the planet is already visible in a geological way. All right? Substracts, layers of substracts, etc., etc. So, for some people, this transhumanism that I will very shortly talk about now is a new El Dorado. And uh, another thing that people are talking about is perhaps the moment has come that we can twist the evolution's arm. We can form a jump in evolution without having to wait millions of years for that to happen. So that's why they talk about the post-human. They talk about death can be defeated, immortality, and other such fantastic concepts. I, I of course, see the smiles on some of your faces, but if we put aside the cheap science fiction aspects of it, just think of it. It is already a given fact that very soon, what is now a lifespan of about 80 years is probably going to be very soon, easily 120 years of age. That mere fact introduces an unbelievable amount of substantial changes, demographic changes, psychological changes, economic changes, labor changes, and you name it. And this is only but a little tiny fraction of what is uh, happening. So... Uh, We, there are two schools here of thought. One says, well, let's be careful. Let's not push it so as to create a new species altogether. The other line of thought says, why not? If evolution is after all happening, and we have the technological means to produce this change, that is going to imply 
a better quality of life, less suffering, less disease, in other words, an enhanced human being, isn't it our moral duty to go for it and to embrace it? I'm not going to take a party here. But one thing emerges clearly too, ethics is now becoming a very substantial part of our everyday life. And we have the professional duty to think about our job, not only in economic terms, not only in political terms, but clearly also in ethical terms. Societies need to know and understand what is all that in order to have a saying, in order to have an educated opinion. And these are very complex issues. And this already leads me... Uh, by the way, what I was talking about, I think, it, I think you are familiar with it, but just imagine a human being that is bio-enhanced, genetically enhanced, assisted by microelectronics, by nanotechnology, by robotics, and by artificial intelligence. This is no science fiction. This is already happening. Now, to where this will lead us, it's a, a, a topic that I'm not going to delve into it because it transcends very much my capacity and also the purpose of this meeting. But to conclude, what I want to say is that probably if we want to secure that our industry has a saying in the future and that it continues to play a relevant role, science, technology, parks and the like, in our communities, we must make sure as professionals of this industry that we are not confined into the corner of the economic aspects. We need to reivindicate that we are also cultural agents and that we have to deal with all these aspects, try to convey these messages to our companies, talk to them, talk to society, bridge scientific and technological knowledge and common knowledge in the street. In other words, there is a whole new role, which by the way, it has always been latent in the idea of science and technology parks since, since the beginning. You see, when we started, we wanted to create innovative companies, foster creativity. There were a number of things that were not common coin at that time. We made them happen, we and others made them happen, and that is a cultural activity and a cultural element also, not only an economic one. Now we need again to embrace all these new changes and we need to reflect upon all these uh, aspects. And what I would say is we need to incorporate to our committees, to our boards of directors, maybe even to our staff as much as we can, not just the technicians. We need to talk to these other people, philosophers, sociologists, humanists, to really give a coherent picture of all these amazing changes that are happening every day and we are witnessing maybe without realizing it fully in our daily life. So what I wanted to say is there is a whole new role and a whole new dimension for our professional uh, life as managers of science and technology parks and the like, and we must be on the alert. We must not be pushed aside of this evolution and this new phenomena. We must be uh, active actors and guide and support and help our politicians to go also into the right direction. And that's why I, I think if we embrace that, we will begin to ad adapt our teams our human resources and our strategies in order to make sure that all these aspects are not neglected and not forgotten. And that's why Tech with a Purpose all of a sudden makes sense. So enjoy the workshop. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Sanz. And also the president of the European Division, Mr. André Domin, please. Yes. Good morning. Does it work? Yes, it does. Um, it's always fun to talk and speak after Louis <laughs> opened uh, the meeting because um, nothing is left to say, I would say. Um, he was talking about philosophy and tech and everything. But in general, um, I would say that um, maybe this, what you talked about, enhancement, would be something I would like to reflect on because um, my impression is, or immortality, that it would not be good for us as humans to be immortal. And maybe um, we are now in a phase where 
human uh, mankind experiences that we are not immortal and we do have a footprint on this planet and the planet is kind of restricted area and um, maybe it would be better to know that everybody has to live let's say a certain amount of time let's say 60 years only and to know that we have to do uh, something within this time and not have like 200 years to do something elsewhere. And I really enjoy meeting the young students or my children and, and um, yeah, experiencing how they look at uh, the time and what they are able to achieve. And they are not thinking they can do it in 10 years or 100 years, but today and tomorrow. And that's uh, a good mixture, I guess. Uh, us old people talking about uh, the past and them talking about uh, the present and the future. So um, I'm not sure immortality would be the best thing to have or enhancement of this and that genetics would be the solution. And you are also talking about um, us as science park managers or consultants or um, anybody who wants to support uh, um, emergent technologies and, and startups and spin-offs not to get lost in the details of our daily jobs and lives. Absolutely, that's a hard task. And the other one, I would say, is even more hard to not get lost in hypes and new trends and the information that's coming on us uh, when it comes to AI, virtual realities, next generation sequencing, you name it, 5G, um, anybody who's telling us that this is the next big thing and we need to have companies and we need to support the technology. So, um, again, I guess the amount of information is crucial for us and we do have to have our own opinions and we do have to have the right um, yeah, friends and consultants to tell us what to do in our parks. So, and I guess this is the purpose of today, that we all meet here from, as Lena said, 10 nationalities and exchange our uh, thoughts. And we will be talking about uh, emerging technologies, so new trends, but also talking about how to deal with these trends and how to support um, the scientists or the young entrepreneur or the big uh, sector uh, companies and others in our parks. And then um, how to consult even politicians who are these days, I guess, um, tending to follow uh, some trends that they, again, hear, hear from. And we do have to make sure that uh, the political and financial support that also is flowing into companies, universities and tech parks is guided into the right direction. So I guess we will have to talk about which kind of technology does have a purpose and really serves mankind in a technological or a humanitarian way. And we uh, can already see that there are trends or technologies that absolutely serve mankind and others that are more destructive, I would say. And we would uh, have to be very careful using them or embracing them and promoting them. So. My hope is that um, you all are able to contribute and that we will have uh, fierce discussions and that uh, there are not so many people standing in front of you talking to you and you are listening only. So I will stop here and i um, happy to be here first time in Linköping for me, second time in Sweden only and um, yeah. Good to know that we have some sun outside, at least. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So we have a very exciting day ahead of us. And to just shortly take you through the agenda, uh, we uh, have tried to put together a program containing the views from society, from academia, and from the business sector. Uh, so to begin with, uh, we will have uh, the general director from Vinova, the innovation agency, to talk about uh, innovation poli politics in Sweden and Europe, I hope. 
uh, followed by a panel discussion with uh, a group of large companies talking about how they can contribute to society and about uh, the global uh, goals and how they integrate sustainability into their work. Uh, we will have two sessions of Swedish Vika, which is very important when you visit Sweden. Not only because it's good coffee and something to eat, but also to have time to discuss and network with one another. After the first uh, Swedish Vika, we will have a panel with uh, three startups that represent different emerging technologies and ways of contributing to a better society. Uh, after lunch, we have the pleasure of inviting the Swedish Minister of Enterprise, Mr. Uh, Ibrahim Bailan, who will come here and give a short speech, uh, followed by uh, two panels. The first one on areas of innovation and emerging technologies, represented by the clusters and by the academia. And after that, a discussion on how do we need to build the future of the innovation ecosystem to support this development and to support our companies and to support uh, the development of society. Uh, and last of all, a short wrap up before the bus will take some of you back to the hotel and others will have some time off before we meet up for dinner.